What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender Rigid Body Simulation tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to start working with rigid body simulations by simulating um, some collisions between objects. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so as many of you know, rigid body simulation is a way you can simulate the movement of solid objects inside a blender. So um, let's go ahead and let's start off by adding a plane. So we'll do a shift A, mesh, we'll add a plane. We'll scale this up a um, fair amount, and we're going to go ahead and go to Object, Apply, Scale. So and we can go ahead and delete out our default dog for right now. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, I'm going to select the plane. We're going to go down into the Physics Properties. We're going to select the option for Rigid Body, and we're going to set this Rigid Body to Passive. And so what that means is that means that this is basically going to be frozen in place, and the other objects will interact with it. So like for example, now we're going to add a sphere. So we're going to do a shift A, we're going to add a mesh, and we'll go with UV sphere. And we're going to go ahead and set our radius on this one to something like, we'll call it 36 inches. And so we're going to move that up like this. So we're going to do a G and a Z and move it up. And then let's go ahead and let's in the physics properties, add another rigid body right here. So we'll click on rigid body. We're going to set this one to active. We'll go ahead and set our mass to 20 pounds. And so one thing you need to be aware of when you're doing this is you need to try to model this to real world dimensions because otherwise you're going to get some kind of weird results. So this is actually calculating based on weights and sizes. So try to model everything to scale if possible. But now if we were to take this and just click the play button, down at the bottom of the screen, you can see how the sphere is going to fall and it's going to run into this um, plane right here and then it's going to stop. So that in its simplest form is how we can do a simulation inside a blender. Well now, what we want to do is we want to create something that we can actually crash this into. So let's start by doing a shift A. We're going to add a cube. So then we'll take that cube and we've got it about 24 inches wide, which I think is fine for right now. And we'll just move this up so that it's aligned with this plane. And you need to be careful with this because if you put it above the plane like this, it's going to drop. So we need to get it kind of close. Usually what I do is I rotate this and then I right click on it and I have an add-on called drop it, which will drop it and align it to the ground right here. So now I know this is sitting on the ground. And so now what I want to do is I want to create an array with this cube because I want to make like a pile of cubes, right? So we'll go ahead and under our modifiers, we'll just click in here. We'll add an array modifier and I just want to create some copies. We'll start in whatever direction this is along the red axis. I'll go ahead and I'll create 10 copies, right? So we've got 10 copies right here. One thing you want to do, because if you look at this, if you go to your wireframe, like this, you can see there's no space between these cubes. You want there to be just a little bit of space um, so that there's room for movement a little bit later. So maybe we'll set this to like 1.02 on our offset. So you can see how that gives us just a little gap in between these cubes. So we've created one array. Now we want to add another array. And we want to set this one, instead of in this direction, we want it to go in this direction. So we'll just click on the second option, type in 1.02. And actually, you need to be careful here because it actually adds this down below. So it's actually the second modifier that we want. So we want to adjust this to 1.02. We'll set our relative offset to zero. And we'll go ahead and we'll set this to 10 copies as well. So you can see how we've created 10 copies this way, 10 copies this way. Well now, we're going to add a third array modifier, right? So we're going to click on array. And for this last array, what we want to do is we want to set this so that it moves in the up direction, right? So we want to create multiple copies in the up direction instead of sideways. So we'll turn our relative offset here to zero. Then we'll go to our third option here and we'll type in one like this. Note that for this one, you don't want spaces between these because if you create spaces in the uh, in the Z direction, then what's going to happen is you're going to run your physics simulation and all these boxes are going to like drop on top of each other, right? So what we want to do is we want to type in a value of 10 right here. That's given us 10 copies of this object, right? So now what we have is we have a number of copies of this cube. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move the sphere up and out 
for right now. So just so it's kind of out of the way. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to center this or close enough to the point where the axes intersect. And so what we have right now is we have all of these cubes in here, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our physics simulation to this. But the first thing we need to do is apply these in the order that they were created. Because right now, if you click on this, this is really just one cube, right? If I tab into edit mode, only the one cube is actually in here. So what we wanna do is we want to start from the start from the top and work our way down and click on the apply button like this right so we're going to apply this all the way through so that these get created as individual cubes but notice how even now if i do this they're not in here as individual cubes right they get kind of placed um, they get kind of grouped together in this single object so right now our physics simulation wouldn't really work if we did it this way so what we want to do is we want to tab into edit mode like this then we want to hit the A key, we want to tap the P key. And so what that's going to do is that's going to separate these into individual objects. So we've got all of these selected, we want to tap the P key, go down to buy loose parts. And so when we select buy loose parts, notice how what this did is this took all of these cubes and it made them into its own, their own objects, right? So now if I tab out of this, and I go back into edit mode, I can select each cube individually. So now these will operate separately inside of your simulation. And so we need to do a couple more things though. The first thing we need to do is we need to add rigid body simulation information to these cubes. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna pick one of these cubes right here and go over into our physics properties. So we're gonna click on physics properties. We're gonna select rigid body and we're gonna leave this one as active Go ahead and set the mass to something like one and a half pounds. And so depending on what this is, you could adjust the shape. So you could set this to be a box shape. So this is basically the shape that this uses in order to calculate the way the physics works. I'm gonna leave it as a convex hull. Um, and uh, the reason for that is it's gonna be a little bit more accurate right here. But if you have larger simulations, you might wanna think about changing the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is. So the problem right now though, is that we've only applied physics properties to one of these objects, right? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna go in here and we want to select this object, the one that has the physics properties in here, and then we wanna hold the shift key and we wanna select all of the other boxes, right? So, and I may need to go into wireframe mode in order to make sure I get all of them, but I'm just gonna do a shift drag And so what that's done is that's selected all of them and this object is the active one, right? Because it's the one we selected first. Well, what we wanna do now is we wanna go into object, we wanna go down to rigid body, and we wanna select the option for copy from active. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna copy the physics simulation settings from the first object we selected and give it to the rest of these. Right, so if I click on copy from active, it's going to go through and it's gonna apply all of those settings to all of these different cubes. And so that's gonna take a minute. Okay, so now if we click on each one of these, you can see how these all have the rigid body settings applied to them now. However, if we were to take this at the moment and hit the play button, we're not gonna get a good result, right? So if we take this, you can see the whole thing's just gonna kinda like throw itself on the ground and it's a very strange result, right? And so the reason for that right now is because we haven't adjusted the object origins yet. So you can see how if I select all of these, all of them have an object origin right here. Well, this is gonna use the object origin to calculate the way that your physics work. So what we need to do is we need each one of these objects to have their own origins central to the actual, um, the actual geometry. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna go to a front view and we'll go to wireframe real quick. So just hold Z and move your mouse over wireframe. Then we're just gonna select all of these. So all of our cubes are selected. We wanna go to object, set origin, origin to geometry. And so if we look at this now, now 
all of our boxes have their own individual origin centered on the geometry. So this might get a little bit trickier with more complex shapes. For what we're doing right here, it's gonna work about perfect though. So now, if we were to play our simulation, you can see our boxes are gonna sit right here. And you may get a little bit of movement in here. That's just due to the gaps that are in here. So you may, when you're creating your array, wanna make sure you get them really tight. Um, the way they move around is a little funky. Okay, so now, let's do a couple more things. So first of all, I'm gonna scale this up. So I'm gonna scale my plane up, just so there's a little bit more room in here for the pieces to kind of spread around on this face, right? And then the other thing we wanna do is we wanna take our sphere and center it. So I'm just gonna take a top view and just uh, move this by tapping G and then doing a Shift Z. I guess I don't need to do a Shift Z in a top down view like this one. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop this sphere on our boxes. So we're gonna take our keyframe back to zero or our time back to zero. And then we're just gonna click on the play button. Notice how now, if you drop this in here, this is going to crash into this pile of cubes and it's gonna make them all fall outward. So in its simplest way, this is how we can use rigid bodies to simulate different results. Now, one thing we could do if we wanted to, to make this a little bit more interesting is let's up the mass. So I'm gonna select the sphere go into my mass settings and set it to more like 100 pounds. And then we'll reset the simulation. We'll click and play again. So you can see how when we do this, this has a much more pronounced effect. You can see how this drops down into this pile of cubes right here. And so you could also create like a ramp or something like that. Um, I've seen tutorials with like a wrecking ball as well. Um, but in its simplest form, this is how you can use this in order to simulate rigid body movement inside of Blender. And so from here, we could do a lot of different things. Like for example, let's say that we wanted the first 100 frames of this to get rendered, right? Well, what we could do is we could set our start to one, our end to 100, and then, and we'll go ahead and do this in EV so it's a little bit faster, but we could go in here, select EV as our rendering engine, and then in our output settings, we could select a directory and also a file format. So in this case, maybe like an FFmpeg video. So if I was to select that, um, actually it's not gonna work yet because we need to add a camera. So we'll just do a Shift A, we'll add a camera, we'll type the zero key, and you need to make sure in your settings over here, so tap the N key in order to get this to pop out, that you've selected the option for lock camera to view. And so then, I'm gonna move my camera like this. We probably need to add a light to our scene. So let's just add a sun, just for simplicity's sake. And we'll just adjust this so we've got some shadows in here. Maybe turn this up to something like 10 for right now. So then if we were to play this in rendered mode, notice that this is still going to happen. And it's really fast if we're playing it in rendered mode inside of Eevee. So this is kind of a preview of what this is gonna look like. I'm fairly happy with this. Um, remember to set your output folder to wherever you want this video to go. And then once we have this all set, we can go to render, render animation. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna render out all of your different frames. And so it might take a little bit to start just cause it's gonna load in everything. So when it initially loads, it takes a little while um, in order to get everything loaded in. But this is gonna go through and this is going to, for the duration of your video, which is 100 frames, it's gonna render out every single frame and then stitch them together into a video. And so in this case, when this starts rendering, you might notice that we start getting some weird results, right? You need to watch the first few frames to make sure that this does what it's supposed to do. At the moment, it is not rendering out all of my cubes. And so one thing Blender recommends that we should go ahead and do is baking your animation. So we need to go ahead and cancel out of this for right now. And let's bake the frames of our physics simulation um, so that we can make sure that this is going to render out properly. All right. And so the reason we get a weird result is because we haven't baked our physics. And so baking is basically pre-calculating our physics. So what we wanna do is we wanna select all of our physics objects and I'm gonna make this easier just by turning my sun off. And then we're gonna go to our front view like this. 
we're gonna select all of the objects that have physics properties. So not my camera, not my son, but everything else. Then we're gonna go into object mode under rigid body. We're gonna select the option for bake two keyframes. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through and it's gonna pre-calculate the movements for 100 frames. So we're gonna click on okay. And then this is gonna take a minute to do because it's going through and it's actually doing calculations, but this is gonna bake our physics. So it's basically gonna pre-calculate all of that physics. All right, so now we can turn our sun back on. And look at this, and you can see how this is pre-calculated this whole thing. So now it's playing inside of our viewport. Well, now we can go back, do what we did before, where we click on render animation. This is gonna go through and this is gonna render this out. Notice how when you render this out, this is actually gonna go a lot faster because it's not calculating the physics and then calculating the render, it's only calculating the render. So you can see how this sphere is now gonna fly in, um, it's gonna drop into this pile of boxes, and uh, when we're all done, this is gonna stitch this together into an animation. So we'll come back in a little bit and we'll take a look at that final result. So now if we play our video, you can see we have a rendered video of our physics simulation. Obviously we still need to add some light and uh, add some textures and other things like that, but you can see how you could use this to build and create some really interesting simulations in the future. So that's from it in this video. We're gonna continue this series and do some more really interesting stuff with rigid bodies, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video, what you'd like to see in the future. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.